Welcome to Fight News Now Extra. I'm John Pollock, and we have all of today's news coming at you. Robin Black, John Ramdeen, and I will be discussing another title bout going to Dallas. The promotion's return to Montreal is starting to take shape, and Fox will get a women's strawweight bout in New Jersey. The UFC is preparing for their return to Montreal on April the 25th at the Bell Center and are starting to put together the key fights on the card. A report on UFC Tonight indicates that they are working on putting a TJ Dillashaw versus Edinburgh rematch in the headline position, as well as working on a light heavyweight bout between Quinton Jackson and Fabio Maldonado. Neither fight is official, but that is the direction they are working towards. The UFC has added a lightweight bout between Ross Pearson and Sam Stout to the UFC 185 card on March the 14th in Dallas, Texas. Both are coming off losses in their last outings, with Pearson being stopped by Ally Quinta last November, while Stout has not fought since last April, where he was stopped by KJ Nunes in Quebec City at the Tough Nations finale. In addition to Anthony Pettis and Rafael Dos Anjos fighting for the lightweight title at UFC 185 in Dallas, a second title fight has been added with newly crowned strawweight champion Carla Esparza making her first defense of that title against Joanna Jacek. Esparza became the champion last month at the Tough 20 finale with a win over Rose Nama Yunus and Jacek earning the shot with a win over Claudia Gedalia the next night. We have another women's strawweight fight booked as Ariel Hawani reported on UFC Tonight that Felice Herrig will meet Paige Van Zandt. Herrig is coming off the Tough 20 season while Van Zandt was not allowed to participate on the show due to being under the age of 21 and notched her first UFC win last November over Kylan Curran. And a reminder that this Sunday night, Fight Network will be live at 6 p.m. Eastern for our one-hour preview show leading into the McGregor vs. Seaver UFC Fight Night card from Boston. Then at 7 p.m. Eastern, the prelim fights will be coming at you here on Fight Network, headlined by Kyle Pendred taking on Sean Spencer among the six fights that you will be seeing. And then it all goes down 10 p.m. Eastern on TSN2 with the main card from Boston featuring Conor McGregor and Dennis Seaver in your featherweight main event. Here with John Randian and Robin Black, we have just a waterfall of fights falling upon us. Uh, looking ahead, uh, way down the line, this is about 55 events in the future, but they're going to be coming back to Montreal at the Bell Centre, and we're seeing now at least the pieces of what they're working towards. A rematch with TJ Dillashaw and Henan Barrow, which when you break down that bantamweight division is kind of... Our hands are tied. This is about all we can do. If Uriah Faber isn't going to take that fight and Asun Sao is still nursing that ankle Cruz. and Dominic Cruz is out for who knows how long, yeah, you kind of just eliminate everyone else and there's Henan Barak. However, word on the street is that oh. uh, Frankie Edgar has been told that if he drops down to 100, uh, 135 pounds, he could get a shot at the Bantamweight title. And I think, hey, Frankie Edgar's the man. This is, if anybody could do it, Frankie Edgar could do it, and the, I'm sure the idea... That's good word on the street, because yeah. if Connor wins, he's going to get run over by a bus, because he is not going to be getting that title fight, yeah. even though you could make a strong argument that he deserves it after that win He does deserve it, yeah, 100%. I think Frankie Edgar... I think we all agree that Frankie yeah. Edgar's the man, and all you have to do is look at that, his fight with Jose Aldo. Very, very competitive fight, and I'm sure all Frankie Edgar has to say is, you know what, I've, I've realized some of my mistakes, I've, I've improved since that first fight, and I know I'd be able to finish... Uh, Jose Aldo. Frankie Edgar is one of the best fighters in the world, and uh, I guess that's not quite enough these days. You also have to be one of the most marketable fighters in the world, and, he, and I think he is, but maybe no, certain people don't agree. He, he doesn't really talk trash. Yeah. He's just one of these, uh, you know, when, is the marketability though? Like we're going to have this conversation all year long, especially with Connor, with the talk of Anderson Silva leapfrogging a bunch of guys. Is that so wrong though? In the fact that the UFC, listen, they are not a charity. It is making money and if we are going to present you these different options and Anderson Silva going for the title is going to get the most buys out of all the contenders yeah. I mean if this was an election he would yeah. be elected by the most people by supporting yeah. that fight and then if you're in the minority that might not be the yeah. fight you want but you are in the minority well nothing is right or wrong I mean unless and really how are things decided what is a win or what is a loss or what is right or wrong today it's done by commerce. It's done by what wins, what makes money. That's what happens in every business. But part of being a fan, part of being involved in, in whatever sport, whatever entertainment, is voicing what you want. And I want to see the best fighters fight for the title. That's what I want to see. So that's what I'm going to be vocal about. That's what lots of fans will be vocal about. But we're going to be the minority to the fans who say, I want to see the most popular guy fight for it. Because that's who they're going to put there. So voice your concerns. Be loud about it. 
pick a camp that you belong to, but in the end of the day, where the money is going to be made is where they're going to choose. But it all, and that's how every business it, works. It's true, but it also comes down to uh, the type of performance. You look at Anderson Silva versus Nick Diaz, and sure, if Anderson Silva comes out and obliterates Nick Diaz, you, I can understand why a lot of people would say, okay, you, we have a new Anderson Silva, let's see another fight with Chris Weidman. However, if Anderson Silva it's, wins a split decision, or Nick Diaz wins a split decision, is, do people really want to see Anderson fight for that title? Uh, and then you look at the fight with Lyoto Machida and Luke Rockhold, what happens if Luke Rockhold comes out and dummies Lyoto Machida and stops this guy? It depends on the outcome of all these fights. Same with Jacare and Romero. It does and it doesn't, because in the end, Britney Spears or whoever could have the biggest record in the world. What that means is the most people wanted to buy a Britney Spears record. It does not mean she's the best singer. It does not mean she's the best songwriter. It does not mean she's the best musician. But she is the most popular, and that's what makes money. And that'll be the same thing with a fighter in, in an entertainment-based sport. That's just how it is. Uh, let's move on as well. There is going to be now a second title fight added to Dallas, Texas with Carla Esparza, Joanna Jacek, and we're seeing Elias Theodoro added to that card. Sam Stout, I guess, kind of Windsor's loss is Dallas's <laughs> yeah, game. Right. Is that what I can uh, ascertain? A, I think so. That's exactly so. what happened. Uh, all of these fights, we were hearing rumors. Sam Stout and Pearson was going to be main card in, in Windsor. Elias was being booked for Windsor. So we are starting. I mean, that's pretty normal. You go and you, you make your, your main fight or your main couple of fights, and then you fill it in after that with matchups that are entertaining or good or or matter to people and these ones were going to matter over there it'll matter in, in Dallas too. This is a very difficult fight I think for Sam Stout. Ross yeah. Pearson is a quality quality lightweight not that Sam Stout isn't but we, we've seen Sam have some very difficult outings uh, his last go around with KJ Noons that we were there mm -hmm. for in Quebec City Ross Pearson is a uh, you know that was a very surprising loss to Ally Quinta last November. Uh, yeah I mean you know you look at Sam he's been in this game for such a long time he's still a young guy but we've been talking about the miles and Sam has a lot Why? of miles and I think I'm, I'm surprised by this fight but you know obviously he signed on the dotted line he believes that he can beat Pearson so he's going to try and go in there and give the fans a show. We all know what the main super gyms are and we know what the super coaches are but there are some secret weapons out there and Reno Belcastro is one of them. He's working with Sam Stout on this fight and Reno and Sam are going to come up with something very very good and, and it's going to be a great fight. Watch for Sam he's going to do a lot of things that you won't expect. That's all for us of course lots of of fight night coverage coming up this Sunday. It all starts off at 6 Eastern with our live pre-show. More fight news now. Extra is coming your way.